And I says, no, I wrote it. And she says, um, yes, but she loves you. And um, then she said to me, um, was she schooled in France? And I says, no, I says, this is my, she didn't write it. Well, she's got lovely handwriting. And that, that was the truth. She, she kept on pushing this subject. And then she said to me, uh, that's when she met, she, you're going to France. I says, that's right, that's exactly right. And she says, um, I says, yeah, I'm, I booked up to go to France. I'm, I'm leaving, I'll, I'll be going at the, the end of next month. And she says, um, are you going to see her? And I says, I says, no, 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 no. And um, kind of vague and stuff like that. She says, but you are, you are going to uh, visit the place you met. And I says, yeah, it's not that. I just, you know, what I'm thinking, it's so bewildering. And then she says to me about, um, she, uh, she had family in France and she was just about to call them. Which I found, you know, it was bizarre as well because uh, at what point in time did she decide she was going to call her family in France? And then she told me about living in South Africa and in America and stuff and um, riding horses bareback. And then she told me about the time in Greece. Um, she says, um, I used to bring in the owls and I didn't really know what that meant. I couldn't have worked it out that uh, it was something about bringing owls to the to the house, you know, to feed or something. So then she went on to say that um, all the uh, owls had been slaughtered and she pointed up to Glen Quake. And I said, oh yes, and I said, it's a touchy subject in its neck of the woods. And um, she then, uh, I'll come back to that, she then said to me about Shehalian, or perhaps this was slightly other than the conversation if I'm, if I'm true. Um, she said, I thought you would have come up to see me last year. I said, where? And she said, in Shehalian. I said, I don't know where you live. She said, I live in Shehalian. I said, but there's no properties in Shehalian, it's a mountain. She said, yes, I know. I live in, I live inside uh, Shehalian. Oh, she didn't say inside, she said, I live in Shehalian. And that's the fairy mountain. So my fucking jaw started to drop a wee bit. And um, then she, um, then she then she was profoundly deaf, which uh, was really, really bizarre because if you be part of the conversation face to face with this woman, she picked up on everything, um, even with me smoking a cigarette in between. Because I remember saying to her, do you mind if I smoke? And she said, uh, do as you wish. And um, let me think about it. There were so many significant things she talked about. Anyway, I think probably the most uh, significant part of the whole event for me was after about the stuff about the owls. And when I came down through the small glen that night, driving, when I was driving between um, um, the car park and a place called Corrie Mucklock, um, I saw four owls in my headlights. I've never seen any owls uh, in that. There are owls which uh, exist in the, uh, in the neighbourhood. That's, that's not in doubt. But I had never seen them. And I'd never seen four of my headlights all one by one. Um, I saw m more than down the glen a bit. But one of the parts which I don't think I've mentioned is when I got back home and... Um, at the last point of the night, I went out to the back door just to have a, you know, a roll up tobacco. Smoke it at the back doorstep. But as I opened the door, there was these owls in, in my garden. I can still remember them sitting on the, on top of the uh, the hedging, one on top of the, the washing line, and one on top of the uh, the, the birch tree folded birch tree at the, the, the rear of the garden. It was fucking amazing. 
quite spooky actually. There were tawny owls and barn owls. Really spooky, actually, and uh, that's what that's what got me. I mean, the the whole the whole event. She wasn't going into that meeting. I got the impression from the moment I passed her car, from the very first the very first time I passed her car, uh, there there was a feeling came over me about her. I, I, I truly mean that, and um, and the f immediate thought that was then. Oh, my camera. It was really, really difficult to describe, but it's very true. And um, and secondly, when I saw that, that lay-by later on, um, I glanced at our uh, registration number, which came back to me, and which I put on the government website, and it turned out to be last registered on the 11th of the 11th of the 11th. It obviously doesn't give you a address. Oh well, yeah, that's right. When I gave her my name, she gave me her name, and um, the name was com completely well. How can we say it's not even unusual? It's unique in regards to any name. I've never heard the name. I've heard, I've heard the word, but I've never heard it be a name. Well, that's right. She was on about. Um, Lad, lad, and uh, that's right, she said to me about something about gallium. Or no, she was on about something, what was it now, Andrew? And I said, uh, are you talking about gallium? And she goes, oh, well done. Uh, but no, I'm afraid you're wrong. Um, you studied Latin, didn't you? I says, no. But the thing was, uh, something I'd been in conversation about, just in my head, just that day, I'm sure. And she says, you didn't do Latin. I said, no, I thought you did. That kind of, that's the kind of way she spoke. And of course, that old thing about the Phil's Wester, which I put on a, a separate blog that um, that's so unusual about how she described that. Everything she talked about was very meaningful, very, very odd. I have asked around, uh, the last time I was up at Almory, uh, this soup and sandwiches day, there was also a, let's call it an indoor car boot sale rather than a jumble sale. And there was several people in the, from the community were there. And I was asking around and not one person knew who the hell I was talking about. In fact, this woman says, oh, you're you're starting to spook me out. I said, I do apologise, and I think I did spook her out, actually. She was, um... And, um, let me think, is there anything else, Sandra, that, that was part of this conversation? If there is anything that will come back, but she definitely came back to me a, a few uh, a few nights later and spoke with me, or spoke to me as I was nodding off to sleep. I said it was in a dream, but it wasn't really in a dream, it was just I was nodding off to sleep. And um, she was crystal clear in her. I keep saying crystal clear, but that's exactly what it is. All these scenarios that I have, there's, um, it's like listen, listen to someone's recording. But this is, um, she spoke very clearly with clear instructions of what I needed to do and why I needed to do it. And um, I decided that I would take heed. <laughs>